There was a time when girls and women competed in only a few sports. Back then, female athletes were encouraged to hone their physical skills in very particular events. There were the standouts, like Babe Didrikson, though, and it was through the courage of women like Babe that a path was forged, giving every female athlete after her the thrill of dreaming and doing and reveling in what she can become. And now there's a very special organization called Sports Women of Colorado that carries the torch, that legacy, urging female athletes in Colorado onto heights they may have never imagined. Sports Women of Colorado has been recognizing girl and women athletes for their outstanding achievements since 1975. And today, the organization is recognized as the first of its kind in the nation to honor female athletes annually at the state level. Well, the first thing we do, which will be obvious, is to honor the top athletes in the state. But we also try to honor the contributors to athletics, the coaches, the leaders, we give awards for the most inspirational performance, the most courageous performance. Uh, in so doing, we're trying to call attention to women's athletics and get women to participate uh, in all forms of athletics from a very young age throughout their lifetime and hopefully provide some of the venues for them to be able to do that. And the strength of sportswomen of Colorado not only rests in the individuals and corporations who sponsor it, but also the girls and women who have been, and those who strive to be, placed among their peers in the annals of sportswomen of Colorado. Colorado Sportswomen Hall of Fame is probably one of the highest achievements that I can attain because it's not only your peers saying, you have worked really hard and we want to let you know that we appreciate that, but it also makes me feel that I can be a good role model. Wendy Lucero, 1988 silver medal Olympic diver. When you look into her eyes, it is almost eerie. Her focus is so intense, you all but see the dive before she does it. Her achievements as a world-class diver put her into the Sportswomen of Colorado Hall of Fame in 1987. It is her focus, her dedication, her desire to be the best that represents why she has accomplished what she has, that exemplifies what it is Sportswomen of Colorado really means. I think it's the fact that I really enjoy what I do. And you can only do it once. I'm only young once and this is my only life to live, and so for me, the challenge is just how good can I be before I have to focus on something else. Dedication, it's what makes an athlete good. I'd say probably my best quality that um, I possess is probably my just intensity and my concentration and my drive that I always want to win, and I'm pretty much willing to do anything it takes to win my matches. In the summertime, I usually play about four hours of tennis a day, and I also do two workouts. I usually run or do the Stairmaster bike for an hour. 17-year-old Miko Hempsey works hard to be one of the best. When she was only 14 years old, she was the number one girl in the nation, and she's kept her desire strong to be the best throughout the years. For the last six years, Miko has been the number one woman in both singles and doubles in the Inner Mountain region. Her desire to be great spreads into other areas of her life. It's not enough for Miko to only benefit from the titles and the glory. I'd like to be able to be active for, you know, until I die, so hopefully this will keep me in, some, in pretty good shape. And I just think I get a lot more out of life. I have a lot of other interests also. Law has always been a big interest in my life and I just think that college is really important. It's that kind of attitude that makes a sportswoman of Colorado. We call it desire, that one element that is essential to being the best, to making it. At age 66, she began her career in bowling, 
her average was 44. Now 85-year-old Blossom Schmidt is averaging 130, and that's after a car accident that put her in intensive care with a broken neck, five broken ribs, broken bowling fingers, and a number of other injuries. It hurts her to bowl, but pain doesn't stop Blossom. I like to bowl, and I, I just don't let it affect me. I love to compete. And it is beyond Blossom's comprehension why so many of her peers can't seem to get into competing themselves, why they don't get into sports. And I wonder at some of them, they give up so quick that they think, well, I'll never be a bowler, I'll never be a swimmer, and I certainly, you know, couldn't throw a frisbee through a hoop. Well, you can. It is that kind of inspiration, along with Blossom's tenacious, stick-to-it attitude that Sportswomen of Colorado <laughs> reveres and promotes. Never too late to be a Colorado Sportswoman, Masters Award winner, Blossom Schmidt. I was just so dumbfounded that people stood up for me. They stood up. I couldn't. I was just overawed at, with this attention. I didn't even know I was a sportswoman. <laughs> but she is, in every sense of the word. And Blossom Schmidt is just the kind of role model sportswomen of Colorado looks to. Now, and as you can see, sportswomen of Colorado recognizes girls and women of all abilities and ages. And with that recognition, comes the knowledge that each athlete truly does matter, that what they are doing is not just for them, but a legacy to leave behind that will inspire generations of girls and women to come. And for this, the Sportswomen of Colorado organization makes all the hard work worthwhile. Sportswomen of Colorado has helped women in sports because they recognize the female athlete like they've never done before. I think it's great for women's athletics. A lot of the time women take the back seat to men athletics and we just don't get as encouraged as the men do to excel in athletics. And I think an organization like Sportswomen of Colorado is really important and I think it's going to bring out a lot of fine young athletes. I think you should start when they're young and um, they see what they can achieve. People don't realize what they can do until they try. People don't realize what they can do until they really try. The number of caring corporations and individuals who give to make sure this organization can continue its pursuit of excellence is growing. And they know what they can do if they really try. With contributions, other fine Colorado women athletes can see their highest aspirations. Try to reach them. Look up and see their beauty, believe in them, and try to follow them. Special thanks to the Burnsley Hotel, Norwest Banks, and the Rocky Mountain News for their generous support of sportswomen of Colorado. Sometimes traveling hundreds of miles and then knocking over a barrel like she did in Denver. I don't believe it happened. There's another rodeo. She's from Colorado. And if rodeo's not your thing, how about pro baseball? For a lot of little girls, the Colorado Silver Bullets are the sportswomen who inspire them. Appropriately, the team was here on Mother's Day, showing a new and improved product in a loss to the Colorado Sox. 
hitting proved the biggest challenge in their first season, and the Bullets are still working on it. We got a couple of people who hit the ball a little harder and a little further this year, so relatively speaking, the makeup, the whole ball group is, uh, is, is better than it was last year. I think for this program to be successful um, and, and for it to really be um, to really take off, I think we're, we're going to have to start winning some games and be more competitive than we were last year. After finishing above 500 in spring training, they are getting there. Like baseball, ice hockey is another non-traditional sport for women. Just ask Denver's Jenny Rice. When the Nationals were played at DU, she was the only girl out there. Rice goes to Grayland Country Day, but may transfer out of state to a school with a girls hockey team. I'll bet prep athletes this spring felt like they were playing hockey, what with all the cold and snow and rain. But once it was all over, they had plenty to cheer about. ABK's number one, you're awesome. <laughs> Jesse Nelson made Arapaho awesome. Her penalty kick was the only goal in the Warriors' championship win over Columbine. Fort Collins Peter High beat defending champion Highlands Ranch. The Impalas are first-time winners, and so are the Niwot Cougars. They scored a shutout against Denver Christian. Chatfield junior Jessica Garrow is tops in tennis, serving up match point here against Mitchell's Alana Cole Glazier. Smoky Hill Lacrosse was on the attack in the title game with Cherry Creek. The Buffaloes win their third straight championship. George Washington High ran away with the track title and got a win in the long jump from state record holder Aisha Shabazz. Arvada jumper Jamie Davies had herself a day, finishing second in the long jump before winning both the triple and high jump titles. Eagle Crest Tara Mendoza was a double winner, setting a record in the 800, then winning the mile. Denver South Dominique Calloway continues to own the hurdles, winning for the third straight year. Estes Park freshman Emily Plummer finishes her first season with titles in the mile, two mile, and cross country. Cherry Creek's Lynn Ann Moretto is another young champion. She's just 14 and the first freshman golf medalist. Shannon Ogg had the tournament's low round. Her heritage team wins back-to-back -back titles. An innovative spring conference brought 300 high school athletes together to discuss the issues still facing girls and women in sports. Discrimination today is very subtle. It's, it's under the table. It has not gone away. Donna Lopiano, executive director of the Women's Sports Foundation, got their attention while a peer from Detroit helped them explore motivation. Success is equal to attitude, and attitude is equal to pride and passion. The message was pounded home. To talk to people, women, and, and men, I guess, too, and tell them that women's sports are just as important. Just how successful was the conference? Well, the Sports Foundation has already pledged $5,000 to support it next year. When we come back, former Boulder Boulder champion Ellen Hart Pena, who overcame her eating disorders thanks to the inspiration of some very little sportswomen. One of my motivating factors now um, for much that I do, not just my athletics, but um, it's my two daughters. It's that time. Pulse started off right. She tells them to eat healthy, to be healthy. My primary motivation is to, to try and help girls like my daughters and all the other, all the other little girls out there um, not have to go through what I went through. What Ellen went through was a long bout with a severe eating disorder. Suzanne McCarroll has more on Heart Pena's secret and her triumph over it. Ellen is running again occasionally allowing herself to think about how close she once came to making the Olympic team. When Ellen looks back, she sees a very unhealthy and unhappy young woman. For 10 years, Ellen battled bulimia and anorexia. She gorged and vomited daily. In many ways, it ended her running career. I couldn't even run around the block. I was so weak and so um, um, really depleted. Both mentally and physically, I was just at the end of my rope. Ellen was depressed, at some points even suicidal. I, I felt at times that I would never, ever get out of this prison cell, you know, that was food. 
and I would never be normal and I would never be healthy and I would never be happy. I mean, I tried and tried and I just couldn't get a handle on it. What made the difference was Nelia. And then a year and a half later, Christina. When she became pregnant, doctors told her she would lose her baby if she didn't stop binging and purging. Ellen stopped, not for herself, but for her baby. And now she says she has to stay healthy for them. And you're the monkey and you're the weasel? When she's not running after her children, Ellen is running a few races. Her training schedule is much different than it once was. One hour a day versus six hours a day. Eating normal amounts of food versus starving herself. And yes, for the past year, she's been flirting with the idea of competing seriously again. Even with casual training, Ellen is chalking up impressive times. Six-minute miles. She's older, yes, but much healthier stronger and certainly happier. Warning signs of eating disorders in yourself or someone you love include skipping meals, preoccupation with food, use of laxatives or diuretics, excessive exercise, and purging. Hart Pena suggests Overeaters Anonymous is one place to begin seeking help. There are plenty of local offices around, and the number in Aurora is 369-7766. Certainly, though, not all slim runners suffer from eating disorders. The program at CU is a good example of that from the coach right on down. You guys, just ignore this camera, okay? <laughs> <laughs> CU's distance runners don't ignore nutrition. Coach Toby Jacober sees to that. She's an elite runner who coaches from experience. I think they, they respect the fact that I still run and compete and enjoy it, and I, I stay injury-free. Use your arms all the way through. Woo! 33. And keeping her runners healthy pays off. It's been a thrill to watch them improve and, and watch their excitement as they improve and, and take pride in themselves. Good workout, you guys. That's it. With Jacober's guidance, the CU women dominated the Big 8 championships, winning every distance from the 800 up. Freshman Kelly Smith was conference newcomer of the year, winning both the 800 and 1500. Muffy Raveling took the 3000, Patty Roberts the 5000, and Amy McNitt the 10000. One of their buff teammates had a great spring too, along with a whole lot of other college pace setters. CU pentathlete Heather Sterling wins back-to-back -back Big 8 championships. Indoors and outdoors, Shelly Greathouse was a record-setting discus thrower at CSU. She won the WAC and was eighth at NCAAs. Teammate Christy Morrison was female track athlete of the year and WAC champion in the 400 hurdles. Western State claims two national champions, Tuma Urio and Elva Martinez Dreyer, who wins her third in the 3,000. Mercada Burek Adam wins two national titles for Adam State. Colorado College got its first ever track All-American, Annabelle Arnott. UNC sophomore Nancy Weber is All-American in two events. At Mines, Deborah Putzis is a school record setter in the 800. Regis claims two All-League softball players, first baseman Kerry Lastman and top hitter Amanda Boding. Corey Johnson made All-League for USC with a 4.15 batting average. Freshman shortstop Becky Leopoldis set three school records at UCCS. Sarah Friedstrom set two at CSU and was WAC Freshman of the Year. Mesa's Amy Larson is an All-League outfielder. And Lori Tillian made honorable mention for Fort Lewis. The most valuable female athlete at Air Force is swimmer Tanya Haber after leading the Falcons to the national championship. In tennis, DU's Jane Farquhar is CAC Player of the Year, while UNC takes the North Central Conference team title. The Bears won both the women's and men's championships, and Rosemary Fry coached both. She's Conference Coach of the Year. CU Hoop star Shelly Sheets is having herself some kind of off-season. She not only survived the Olympic trials, she made the World University Games team, and she's the first CU buff to ever win Big 8 Athlete of the Year honors. Rashawn didn't get it this year, or, um, you know, Mike Pritchard, um, you know, some of those athletes that have gone on to, um, you know, professional careers and, and been successful in that, that level, too, and it's just definitely a great honor. Sheets graduates in August, then tours Japan with the University Games team. After that, she plans to go pro. 
And while Sheets is off and about, the player Coach Seal Berry is calling the next Shelly Sheets will be right here in Denver. Buffs recruit Michelle Hosheider will play in the Olympic Sports Festival, and so will two of her future teammates, Aaron Scholes and Reagan Scott, will play on the West team. Hosheider will play for the North. Two of the world's best gymnastics will be at the festival, too, and they're from Colorado Springs. Donnie Thompson and Christy Powell finished 1-2 there last summer and can't wait to get back. It's supposed to kind of relate to how the Olympics are going to be with the team competition and the finals competition. And it's just going to be a wonderful meet because it's right at home. You're going to have a home crowd, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it, too. Finish a race. Can I finish now? Speaking of finish, <laughs> go right ahead, my lady. Stephanie Riggs finishes her very first Boulder Boulder. Stephanie battled her asthma to finish. All the citizens' runners battled the rain. And the elite winner battled the clock and won. Kenya's Delilah Asiago shattered the old record. I was yelling so fast because I wanted to break the course record anyway. That's really great. And I've really done it. That's what I wanted. Yeah, she did it. Yeah. She did it on her own. Running alone from two miles on, Delilah Asiago glided through the streets of Boulder and into the record books. They are 40 seconds under record pace. This woman is a phenom. She lowered the mark by more than a minute to 32.13. You don't have to run for a while, you get a new car. Oh, that's great. That's what I can be for. That's fantastic. The prize wasn't quite as big for the Citizens Race champion, but that's all right with Diane Busa. The former CU runner wins the Colorado Cup. Rather than put pressure on myself for the elite race, I wanted to just sort of blend in this year, and it, it turned out to be a good race for me. The Masters Division race goes to Colorado Springs' Lorraine Caldwell. The 42-year-old finished in 38-22. Second to Caldwell in the Masters race, one of the most inspiring Colorado sportswomen I know, Priscilla Welch. She was a fitness symbol of the 80s and a British Olympian. Now Amy Sporer reports on her most recent challenge, breast cancer. I mean, she's 42. I mean, that's the real point. She was the oldest winner of the New York Marathon. Priscilla Welch. A few years ago, I would have had trouble walking up this hill. A Nike athlete with her very own ad. Who says you can't run away from your problems? Just when I was trying to get the last out of my career and I knew the best was yet to come, and I, I, I got breast cancer. And that now, with the help of her husband, uh, Dave, idea. Priscilla yeah, Welch is a survivor. A healthy mind uh, promotes a healthy body. I know it now. Whether it's doing this REI clinic for women or fighting cancer, Team Welch does it together. I think I had the idea that because of my lifestyle and because of the running and everything, I was above anything like that. I was going to live forever. She raced non-stop at an elite level for a decade, and she wonders what effect it had. My main concern is I don't want to jeopardize my immune system again like I did before. I don't want the disease back again. I don't want to leave the door wide open for it to come back again. So shorter distances are her focus for now, like the race for the cure 5K. But afterwards, at these races, I, I've appreciated going to these races and meeting up with other women. That was a great comfort for me. She ran during chemo, and now she's talking 96 Olympics. So it's, the running went full circle, and again, once again, out of health and fitness, I'm starting up again. And who knows, by the time I'm 90, I might have completed the whole five Olympic circles. Think about it, okay? The race for the cure raises money for breast cancer research, and no excuses. You've got plenty of time to train for it. The 5K is set for October 1st in Civic Center Park. Call 438-5191 for more information. Masters cyclist Karen Hornbostel's on the comeback from breast cancer, too. This is her first full season back racing, and she's making it count. Her challenge is to medal at nationals and to raise money. She's donating all her winnings to the AMC Cancer Research Center. To support her effort, call 977-7575. When we come back, you'll need a pencil and paper. We want to hear from you about your favorite Colorado sportswomen. And get ready for golf. The game's best are coming to Colorado.
sport. Um, so I'll, I'll be giving it my best. That's golfer Patty Sheehan, the defending U.S. Women's Open champion. She'll be giving it her best at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs next month. And so will her challengers, including former champion Meg Mallon. Kathy Walsh says Meg has been practicing extra hard for it right here in Colorado. Just right there and letting it work up a little higher. Former Open and LPGA winner Meg Mallon stops by Colorado regularly for lessons. What'd you feel on that one, Meg? That's well, right. Even pros need are. lessons. It never gets boring. You always have something to work on and, and something to strive for. I like where you're getting it at the top right there. Mike McGetrick's the teacher to the pros, and he can't wait to watch him at the Open in July. Who knows, maybe I'll get the caddy for somebody. <laughs> you don't know until the last hole on Sunday, really, who's going to win the golf tournament. It's, it's great. It's a great tournament. A good one there? Yeah, that was good. To see Malin, Sheehan, and the rest, call the Open at 719-577-5807. It's the best in women's golf at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, July 10th through the 16th. And if Meg Mallon is still taking lessons, how do we get to be our best? Well, a new program, Back to Golf, could be the answer. Okay, what we're trying to see here, how your, how your, how your body's going to move. Okay, so go ahead and take It's a golf things. lesson and a physical flexible. therapy session all in one. That particular tightness keeps you from rotating clear around through your legs, perhaps like you normally would like to. Carol so Kishiyama is the therapist, and Walta is the pro. Right? So as much as I would talk about trying to get turned, they just couldn't go past here anyway. We're just finding out where you're restricted and where you can improve things so that you can hit the ball better, that's all. Oh, that's great, and I will do these stretches. It's a teamwork approach that seems to help. Young golfers can improve their game, and beginners can learn how to play with the Junior Girls Golf Club. And Walta calls them the Golfing Girl Scouts. For more information, she's at 795-6240. You've met a bunch of great Colorado sportswomen this half hour. Now, as promised, we want to know who inspires you. Write us at Colorado Sportswomen, Post Office Box 5012, Denver, 80217. Tell us who gets you going and why, and make sure to include your phone number. We will showcase one of your favorites in our next show. Sportswomen who motivate me include Olympic diver Wendy Lucero, boulder runner Melody Fairchild, and a good friend who runs marathons. Give a listen to who inspires some of our boulder boulder runners, and remember, if you keep going for it, we'll be here to keep reporting it. See you next time. Connie Carpenter Finney is certainly one that, that a lot of us look up to. Before. My mom, my daughter, she likes to run and she gets me involved in these.